Hello and welcome to the Ultimate Quant Review, or the UQR as I like to call it. Uh, my name is Alex and I am the creator and narrator of this UQR course, what I call a stripped down, bare bones GMAT math course that trains test takers to attack the GMAT quantitative section with ruthless efficiency. Okay. Um, what this video represents is just a basic um, introduction to how this course is going to work, as well, of course, as a free preview to the course, which I should point out is as yet unfinished. Uh, so what this video is actually also functions as is kind of a placeholder. I need some kind of introduction to know in which direction I'm going. But at the same time, this video, along with the following videos, uh, represent a good free preview uh, of how the course will run so people can just see for themselves how effective, in fact, it will be. Um, in this video, I just need to discuss a basic introduction to how the course is going to run, uh, and I will do a sample problem, uh, and in the next videos you'll see more just pure actual problems. Um, but that being said, let's just talk about an introduction to the course. So this basic introduction uh, to the Ultimate Quant Review. As you might notice, no bells and whistles in this course, okay? Uh, it's just the very best GMAT math strategies on the market. I have been doing this now for well over 12 years. I have worked with hundreds and hundreds of students, and I really do believe I have developed the very best quantitative math course, uh, GMAT math course, on the market. It's really great, okay, in my humble opinion. Um, one prerequisite, though, that people should know is that you do need to have competent math skills to fully appreciate this course. And what I mean by that is you have to be comfortable with algebra, like solving for x, uh, two equations, two variables, or uh, dealing with fractions, adding and subtracting, or exponents and radicals, moving that stuff around. Uh, you do have to be comfortable with that. Um, because most of the math questions in this course are high level, okay? Most of them are six to 700 level, and many are seven to 800 level, okay? Definitely a more advanced course. What this course is gonna be designed to do is to have those students already comfortable with math get them into the much higher ranges of the GMAT. Uh, that's what this course is designed to do. Um, all of the questions are derived from actual, the official guides, which everybody should have, uh, from the tests on MBA.com and the fun the four major GMAT prep companies uh, courses okay um, they are designed to really parallel exactly what students can expect to see on the actual day of the test now to fully appreciate um, how this course runs it is certainly not a requirement um, but to fully appreciate this free preview you are going to want to download and print out a couple of things from my website specifically where it says UQR questions. So those will be the questions that we'll be working out of during the free pre preview and the course. And then the UQR manual, uh, that is my GMAT training manual that shows students exactly what to do with any math question that they might see on the test. Um, at this point, you need to know that the questions are actually limited, okay, again, because it's for the free preview. Again, the course is not quite finished, um, and only part of the training manual is available. However, as part of the UQR manual, I have provided the table of contents, and that should provide an excellent preview for the entire training manual. Just in case you're wondering what exactly does this course cover, uh, the table of contents will list everything that this course will cover. Eventually, I expect this UQR course to be uh, fairly extensive, anywhere between 25 and 35 hours. That would mean for viewing time, 50 to 70 hours, okay, of viewing time. Um, let's talk about, though, what you should kind of see on UQR questions and UQR manual, just to make sure that you have everything that you need. You don't have to have it, uh, but it's really the best way to appreciate this free preview and certainly the course. So... UQR questions, um, your first page should look like this. Uh, it's kind of cut off, uh, but it should look like that. Uh, that should be your first page. So notice that, you know, and we'll talk more about that, but notice here at first you have some general guidelines and then an actual question. That's what your UQR question, the first page, should look like. Um, and then the manual, uh, this is what the first page of the manual should look like. Uh, notice towards the bottom top 14 triggers, I mean, it's got cut off there because it's obviously a little bit longer, but this is what your UQR manual should look like. 
Um, and the idea is you're going to have kind of both of those out in front of you as we work through this course. But I will put both the the questions and the manual up on the screen as you see now I will put them back up on the screen that's why you don't have to have it uh, but it's certainly going to be uh, very helpful and a good way to appreciate uh, this free preview so before I go on to a question I just want to talk about really quickly um, why I think my course is just the greatest thing since sliced bread um, basically for two reasons okay uh, and again this is something I've developed over 12 years with hundreds of students um, my general methods and my specific methods those are the two main reasons that I believe this is really the very best math GMAT math course out there uh, my general methods I have this killer trigger method for problem solving it's a two-step method I also have a three-step trigger method for data sufficiency. I'm not going to be talking about data sufficiency in this free preview simply because that requires kind of a different type of knowledge base and I just don't know enough about my viewer yourself thank you very much uh, about like what you do or do not know about data sufficiency problem solving on the other hand is a little bit more straightforward uh, but never you fear I that my method for data sufficiency is freaking awesome um, okay, so those are my general methods, but I also have specific methods, okay? And if you take a look at my table of contents, I really do have a specific method for every concept, and a lot of these methods are not anything else that are on the market, okay? I mean, I'm talking about methods for number properties, multiples and factors, even and odd, prime factorization, uh, products of consecutive numbers, I'm talking about rates and working together and percentages and mixed uh, mixture questions, dilution questions, weighted averages, permutation, combination, probability, geometry, what have you. I really have some terrific specific methods for every concept. Um, and hopefully you'll see some of those <clears throat> in my later videos um, in this free preview. Okay, so I know you guys are probably bored by now. You're like, all right, where's the real action? So this next part of the video, I'm actually going to do an introduction to problem solving and talk about this two-step trigger method. As long as my blind cat Millicent leaves me alone. Yes, she's blind, um, and we had to rescue her, but apparently she understands this idea of working on a computer. That's where she hops up on the table. Yes, she's blind, but she can hop up on a table. All right, so let's talk about this question. So... Let me just go over a little bit here. This is on your UQR questions page. Uh, so this is, the, again, the first page, quantitative problem solving the trigger method two steps. So let me just go over this real quick, and then you'll kind of see where I'm trying to go. Step one is to scan the question and the answers. Scan over everything. Just scan them over looking for what I call triggers, and you're actually going to take your time there. Step two is based on that trigger. you got to do the right thing, and there you got to get moving. So let me talk about what do I mean by triggers. Well, notice if you see trigger here, a trigger is a mathematical concept expressed in the question stem and or the answer choices. So classic example of triggers under top 14 triggers, what I'm going to talk about are two of the top 14 triggers, namely fractions and repeated variables and a common multiple. So, you know, a fraction, that's a mathematical concept. That's a trigger. Repeated variable, that's a mathematical concept, that's a trigger. As soon as you see a fraction, that is a trigger for you to do something, which I have not talked about yet. As soon as you see a repeated variable, that is a trigger for you to do something. No, I haven't talked about that. For example, if I take a look at this question here, if b is not equal to 0, then what is the value of a in terms of b if, notice I have a fraction here. That's a trigger. Notice I have a repeated variable of A here and A here. I have a repeated variable B here and B here. Those are triggers for me to do something. Okay. So the idea is to speed you up. I don't teach students how to reduce fractions or how to eliminate fractions. What I do tell students, as soon as you see these fractions, you know what to do with them. Or as soon as you see these repeated variables, you know what to do with them. This is the idea of this trigger method. So what I'm going to do is the best way to explain really what's going on here um, is to actually do this question um, in the context of the two-step trigger method. And I'm going to do that by kind of getting rid of all this junk and just talking about the question. Ah, there it is. So. Step one of the trigger method is scan over everything. So not just the question, but I'm going to scan over everything, including the answers. Why? 
Because if I'm not too sure what the question is asking for, what is the value in A of terms of B? If I'm not too sure of that, but I look at my answer choices, notice that it's telling me these answer choices are telling me to solve for A. I'm supposed to isolate A or solve for A. So again, you always want to look at the answer choices. Just glance over them. Now, some students already familiar with the GMAT might be thinking, well, we have variables in the answer choices here. Can't I pick numbers? And in fact, you do not want to pick numbers here. Now. Um, the reason for that is because of the nature of the question. That's beyond the scope of this particular video. I go over that later in the course, not in this free preview. <laughs> um, but there is actually another trigger here that tells me that despite the fact that I have variables in the answer choices, I don't want to pick numbers. Um, for those of you that are not familiar with this idea of picking numbers, don't worry about that. Uh, again, that's for later on in the course. And again, I will talk about later on in the course uh, what the trigger is for not picking numbers here. But that's beyond the scope okay, of this particular question because what we're going to focus now on, now that I've kind of done my step one. I've scanned it over. I've noticed my answer choices. And I've noticed my two triggers. Again, I have a fraction here. And I have repeated variables, a and a. And then I have b and b. OK. So step two is based on those triggers, do the right thing. Well, when I have a fraction, that trigger tells me to either reduce, eliminate, or pick numbers. And in fact, I'm going to eliminate this fraction right off the bat. I don't know how to solve for A in terms of B. I have no idea how to isolate A. But you know what? I know how to eliminate this fraction, and I can do so like this, B minus A. I just do that right off the bat, OK? The, given a fraction, that is a classic trigger for me to eliminate that fraction. The GMAT really wants me to do that. And then basic math will tell me to multiply through this negative 1. So I have AB equals negative B plus A, right? OK. Well, now I have the second trigger of these uh, repeated variables. And since I'm solving for a, I have to somehow combine the a's. Okay, And I can do that by subtracting a from both sides. And I get a, b minus a equals negative b. Well, I still don't know how to solve for a, but again, repeated variable. So that's a trigger for me not only to combine the repeated variable, but also to factor. Okay, The GMAT loves for me to uh, factor repeated variables. So I'm just going to do that. So if I factor the a, I have a times b minus 1 equals negative b. Now, for those of you comfortable with math, I can see how to solve. I have a equals negative b over b minus 1. But then I look to my answer choices, and this answer, negative b over b minus 1, isn't there. Well, I know how the GMAT works. I know about fractions. This is not a major trigger, but I do know as a secondary trigger, sometimes I want to multiply a fraction by a version of 1. And here I can do that by negative 1 over negative 1. Okay, Classic GMAT maneuver. If I do that, I get b uh, over negative b plus 1, which is equal to b over 1 minus b, which is answer choice itself, ha ha ha, b. Answer choice b is our correct answer. So the idea of running through all of this, again, is that to look for the triggers. Don't worry so much about how it's all going to work out. As soon as I see the fraction, I eliminate the fraction. As soon as I see the repeated variable, I try to combine them and factor them. And then again, we kind of get to the end here. I know sometimes multiply a fraction by a version of 1. It's this trigger method that is designed to speed you up. Notice I didn't teach you how to do any math. I didn't teach you how to eliminate the fraction. I didn't teach you how to factor. Okay. The idea is to quickly recognize what's going on in the question and then doing the right thing. Now, like I said, I have some killer strategies okay, for the more advanced math. And that's going to be in later videos where I talk about some questions from the official guide. But what I'd really like to do now is just do a basic review of what we just did. So, dun dun dun, dun okay. So this is from your manual, quantitative problem solving the two-step trigger method. I went over. And notice going all the way down, top 14 triggers. Notice we talked about number 7 and number 8. So given fractions, you want to eliminate them, either multi by multiplying by a common denominator, reduce them, or look to pick numbers. Given a repeated variable or a common multiple, by the way, that's a trigger for you to combine and or factor the common elements. Why? Because the GMAT wants us to do that. 
Uh, let me just talk just a little bit about a couple of other things here. Um, you know, first of all, it says here up here, take your time. So you have a full two minutes to do the question. And the fact is, is that should take you about 60 seconds to do the question. So that means that you have a full about 60 seconds to think about the question. Okay, so that should kind of be your step one. Just relax a little bit, let the whole thing kind of wash over you and look for your triggers. But then, based on that trigger, then you got to do the right thing, then you got to get moving. Okay, uh, some general guidelines um, always use the answer choices. Okay, that's a huge deal on this test. The GMAT is fully aware that it's a multiple choice test and they're going to want you to constantly use the answer choices. That goes way beyond just plugging in answer choices. Always keep an eye on the answer choices. They will help guide you to the correct solution. This is something here that I discuss throughout the entire course constantly. A couple other things. Uh, don't make stupid mistakes. You know why? Because that's just stupid. You know, I, I know that sounds a little bit harsh, but a lot of students will say, well, I always make stupid mistakes. You know, this is the big leagues now. You can't make stupid mistakes. So tell yourself, don't make stupid mistakes. Okay. I know that sounds a little bit harsh, but this is the business world now. Okay, You can make mistakes. They can't be stupid. Don't make stupid mistakes. Just don't. Uh, a few other things. Use all the mathematical information in the STEM. It turns out it's all relevant, uh, unless it's redundant, which is rare. But it turns out they're not going to give you any irrelevant information. You always want to use all of the information they provide for you. Uh, really important, have faith that doing the right thing, as I discussed, based on the trigger, will quickly generate the answer. You will see through this course, okay, and as well as the other explanations that I provide for the official guide later on in this free preview in other videos, um, that doing the right thing based on the trigger will, in fact, quickly generate the answer. In general, it's a good idea to stay organized, define your terms. That's standard math. Um, this idea, look to write down what remains after a certain action or function. I'll come back to that idea, but that's going to be consistent with writing down anything you can figure out. And always stay focused on the question when selecting your answer. For those of you familiar with the GMAT, uh, you will know they mess with us sometimes. And that's also an issue that I discuss throughout the course. I also discuss these top 14 triggers. I realize that on the screen there are only 10 of them, uh, but on your page you will have all 14. I'm not going to talk about them uh, now except for one, which is when you're stuck, right? That's a classic trigger. Make sure to just write down anything you can figure out and recall your triggers. Uh, it turns out that if you write down anything you can figure out, uh, you're going in the right direction. Okay, and that's also something that I discuss throughout the course. Um, these 14 triggers, yes, I realize that are cut off. This, these are also something I discuss throughout the entire course, and then I review it at the end of the course as well. Um, they really are very important. Um, they are the 14, what I believe to be the most common elements of this test. Uh, I don't have exponents and radicals. I thought about putting that on there, but that's kind of basic math. But in any case, this is how the course is going to run, OK? Um, so this is how the UQR goes. Uh, you saw that what I do is I, I, I explain a problem based on the trigger, and then I do a review like I just did. Um, I really hope that this is something that helped you out um, and that you learned at least a little bit, and especially enough uh, to continue on checking out my other videos. So thanks very much for your time, and I hope you'll take the time to check out my other work. Thanks again.